early 1960s, a student movement grew in America and confronted what we saw as the country's main problems, especially racism, poverty, and the war in Vietnam. On the television was the image of fire hoses being turned on people, spraying them across the street. They were being thrown every which way by these fire hoses. And the commentator was saying that the reason this was happening is that these people wanted to fight. And I can remember turning to my father and saying, what does this mean? What are they talking about? The right to, they don't vote? Why can't they vote? The South was segregated. I was raised in the 50s of the rhetoric of democracy and equality and fairness for all, and a reality that clearly was not that. You can't try out because you're a girl. February 1st, 1960, four black students from Greensboro, North Carolina, sat down at a lunch counter in Woolworths and asked for a cup of coffee and they weren't served. And that was the beginning of this whole civil rights sit-in movement that spread across the South. The Southern students asked for support from the North. I think it's a, it's a part of the soul that people want to, to serve, to make things better, to have their dreams you know, come true. These connections were forged out of, out of passion and out of a sense of finding somebody who was like I was, that we found each other. Port Huron was to be the place where all the bits and pieces were to be woven together and then discussed. And all it was was sitting around in small groups talking about your values and how they applied to politics and to economics. But you were building this document, the Port Huron Statement. I had never heard of SDS. Uh, and I, so I read the Port Huron Statement from beginning to end. We were really looking for something, and SDS provided a different perspective, a larger perspective. The important thing about SDS was that it wasn't just a civil rights organization or an anti-war organization. or It was a multi-issue organization. One of our slogans at the time was that all of the issues are connected. Now the war in Vietnam has provided the incredibly sharp razor that has finally separated thousands and thousands of people from their illusions about the decency and morality and integrity of this country's purposes internationally. And that is a bitter and saddening insight for people who grew up as we did, believing the things that we did about our country. What kind of a system is it that justifies the United States or any country in seizing the destinies of other people and using them callously for our own ends. What kind of a system is it that disenfranchises people in the South, that excludes millions and millions of people from the mainstream and promise of American society, that consistently places material values before human values? What kind of a system is that? We must name that system, and we must change it and control it, else it will destroy us. You want the mic? Yeah.